Right, this is fifth grade, module four, lesson 10. <clears throat> and in this lesson, we're going to be writing and evaluating expressions involving parentheses. So it's going to feel like we're kind of stepping away from uh, all the work we've been doing with fractions, but really we're not. We're, we're kind of just taking all the fraction work that we have been doing and kind of putting it into action, particularly with something that is going to kind of feel like algebra, a little bit like algebra. So in this lesson, uh, this, this slide, we're supposed to write expressions to match each of these diagrams. And then, of course, we're supposed to solve that and get the answer. And um, so for this first one, this length of this entire tape diagram is represented by 17 plus 4. In other words, 21. But we're going to leave it as 17 plus 4. But then you can see that they cut it up into four equal size pieces, and that has nothing to do with this four. It's just that they cut it up into four equal size pieces, and they want us to identify one of those pieces. So they want us to identify one fourth. So uh, the first thing, the entire thing, is represented by 17 plus four, but they want us to identify one fourth of it. And so that's going to be one-fourth times 17 plus 4. And that is the expression for this picture. It's one-fourth. So this piece, this question mark, is represented by one-fourth. One-fourth times the entire tape, which is 17 plus 4. Now to, to evaluate it, well, first we're going to add the parentheses. So now we have one-fourth times 21. And we know how to do that. Uh, so that's going to be 1 times 21 over 4. Nothing simplifies. So that gives us 21 fourths. And we can turn that improper fraction into a mixed number. And I'll put it down here. And that is equal to 5 wholes and 1 quarter left over. Now moving on to the next tape diagram right here. We have this entire thing, and we don't know what that value is, but we're told that half of it, 2 of the 4, so half of it is equal to 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds. And so if we want to know the whole thing, we're going to take 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds, and I'll write this down, 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds, and we will double it. And why are we going to double it? Because here's 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds, and then here's another 4 sevenths plus 8 thirds. Uh, so we're going to multiply by 2. So doing the math, uh, I'm going to speed this on along a little bit. Uh, we're gonna, we need to get common denominators. So this is going to be 12 21sts plus 56 21sts times that by 2. And so that gives us 68 twenty-firsts times 2. And that's going to give us, and I'm going to need a little more room here, and that's going to be 68 times 2 over 21, which gives us 136 over 21. And to convert that in, that's an improper fraction. To turn that into a mixed number, we need to do some division. So I'm going to go over here on some scratch paper. And I'm going to do 136 divided by 21. And let's see, oh, it looks like maybe 6 times. So 6 times 21 is 126. We subtract, that gives us 10 left over. So that tells us that that improper fraction, 136 over 21, is equal to 6 wholes, 10 21sts. So this is equal, I'm going to put that over here, 10 21sts. All right, so I'm going to zoom back up to the top here. All right, now here, we're supposed to write an expression to match and then evaluate. Okay, so we have this phrase here, and we need to write a numerical expression that matches this phrase here. So it says 1 8th the sum of, 
these two numbers. So we're going to be adding these two numbers. So we're going to start by writing that down. And we may have to modify it later, but let's start writing that down. So th the sum of 23 and 17, that's, that's what we've written down here. Now here it says 1 eighth of this. So that means we're going to multiply by 1 eighth. So there's our phrase. Uh, in this case, we could have, if we chose to, we could have used the commutative property, and we could have written it like this. And that would work also. Um, but I chose to write it the way I did right here first, so it's one-eighth of the sum of these two numbers. I know the word of wasn't here, but I put it in there. One-eighth of the sum of 23 and 17. So now we have to evaluate. So we're going to figure out what that is equal to, and it doesn't matter which one we use because they're identical. Uh, so let's use this one because that's what I wrote. So it's going to be 1 eighth times, now we have to add, and we get 40. And so that is equal to 1 times 40 over 8. And we can see that 40 and 8 are each divisible by 8. So that gives us 5 over 1 and 5 and 1. So 1 times 5 is 5 over 1. And so the answer is 5. Similar problem. Uh, subtract 4 from 1 sixth of 42. So you kind of have to read the whole thing and then kind of figure out, well, how am I going to start? Almost like start from the inside out. And uh, where I see it, it says subtract 4 from this. So I'm going to write this down first. Let's kind of see what I mean by kind of inside out or backwards. 1 sixth of 42 means 1 sixth times 42. But then it says we're supposed to subtract 4 from this. So I'm going to put parentheses and a minus 4. So there's my expression. And I think for students, it would be a little confusing that the 4 comes first in the words, but it comes last in the numerical expression. I think that's a little confusing, but uh, heads up for that. And now let's evaluate. So we're going to evaluate. So 1 sixth of 42. So that means 1 sixth times 42. So that's going to be 1 times 42 over 6 minus 4. And we can see another way to do this. I think I did it differently last time. So we're going to do it this way. 1 times 42 is 42 over 6 minus 4. And 42 over 6 is equal to 7 minus 4. So that gives us the answer of 3. So the answer is 3. So I'll put that in up here. Equals 3. And the last slide for this video, uh, what, what they're asking us to do is to compare the left side with the right side, but to do it without calculating. We're supposed to use logic. So um, let's look at this first problem. And I see a 2 thirds times something, and I see 2 thirds times something. So he, without calculating, but I can see that this is 21 and this is 15. So I've got on the left side, I've got two-thirds of 21, but over here I've got two-thirds of 15. So that automatically tells us that two-thirds of 21 is bigger than two-thirds of 15. Using logic. Not actually going to do any calculations. Similarly, I can see down here I've got three times five-fourths, and I've got three times five-fourths. Now they're, each of those are being multiplied by something. On the left, I'm multiplying it by three-fifths. On the right, I'm multiplying by three-eighths. Since three-fifths is bigger than three-eighths, that means this left side is going to be bigger than the right side. And then the last one. Um, on this one, this is kind of tricky. This honestly took me a little while to think of this. So this says 
I have six copies of a two, and then one copy of 32 sixteenths. But over here, this says I have six copies of a two and a 32 sixteenths. So this really, the left side, means I'm going to have six twos and six 32 sixteenths on the left side. Whereas on the right side, I only have six twos, six copies of the two, and only one copy of the 32 sixteenths. So that means the left side is bigger again. And that wraps up fifth grade module four, lesson 10, writing and evaluating expressions.